Okay, so today I want to talk about two different things. I want to talk about risk management in the outdoors, and I also want to talk about uh, the concept of safety third. Okay, so when I go paddling in the winter, even here in central North Carolina, it's a fairly risky proposition. So the risks in terms of the way that we think about them are the weather risks, which is obviously the weather in the air, but also includes the water temperature. So really it's environmental risks. I have to think about the physical aspects of what we're doing. So for myself and anyone I'm paddling with, like today I was paddling with my friend Johnny, I have to make sure that we're both feeling good and are both feeling healthy. We have to think about the gear that we're using. So are the boats appropriate? Are our boats functioning the way that they should? Do we have any mechanical issues? Do we have the safety gear that we need? Bilge pumps, paddle floats, spare paddles maybe, um, first aid kits, dry layers in the van or in the car when we get back to shore. Um, are we wearing dry suits to protect ourselves? Are we thinking about immersion? So all of those things factor into the decision-making process. And we're watching those factors right up to the moment that we get on the water. Well, over the past couple of days, I've been checking air temperature and wind. As soon as we get on the water, we're thinking about how are conditions changing? What are we doing throughout the process of the day? Are we feeling okay? Is everything good? Are we fueling well? We're watching it as an ever fluid situation in terms of all of those factors. The environmental factors, mechanical factors, or the gear factors, the people factors, or the human factors. Um, so all of those things are things that we're looking at while we're paddling um, to make sure that we're doing it as safely as we can. We can never mitigate all of the risks, but that's part of playing in the outdoors, is learning to understand the risks and learning how to mitigate them as best you can and adapt to an ever-changing situation. So that's sort of how we handle risk management in the outdoors, and this is all covered in my book, Go, which is available on Amazon. Now let's talk about safety third. Ugh. Safety third is a completely different concept. Safety third, well, I guess it sort of plays in. Safety Third was started by a guy named Mike Rowe, who was on the TV show Dirty Jobs. And they went all over the country and the world working with people who had jobs that no one else wanted. And frankly, a lot of them were dangerous. I'll put a link to one of his videos about Safety Third in the description below. And what Safety Third is, is if you're choosing to do something that is inherently dangerous, you can't use the term safety first. So we see that a lot, particularly in the United States, the concept of safety first. Everything we do should be safety first. You see signs from OSHA about safety first. You see placards in, in warehouses and, and construction sites, how many days since the last accident. Um, if you're doing something inherently dangerous, you can't say safety first because the first thing would be, oh, if this is dangerous, let's not do it. Just like today for us paddling, we have to sort of skip past the fact that what we're doing is inherently dangerous while making sure we're mitigating that risk as much as possible. Um, and what Mike Rowe found was that in their first season of Dirty Jobs, they had no injuries on, on set. The second season, I think he said that he had one injury, not himself, but a member of his crew. And the third, they had a series of injuries. And what they realized was happening was complacency. And complacency is a real risk in the outdoors. I, I hear all the time people in talking about safety will say, oh, this is safe because I've done this a hundred times and I've never had a problem. Really all that means is that you've never been caught. It doesn't actually mean that what the, the, the process that you're using is safe. And so Johnny and I are constantly checking each other. We're making sure gear works the way that it needs to be, to be working. We're constantly being fluid in our assessment of that risk. Um, the other part of safety third is that it's it's sort of understood that employers and work sites are making that environment as safe as possible for you. But really, the safety aspect of what you're doing is your responsibility. Everyone has to be responsible for their safety in whatever environment it is. So that's what safety third is. 
And I know a number of outdoor educators who are big proponents of the concept of safety third. It doesn't mean I'm not looking out for the safety of my students and my clients. I want, absolutely want them to be safe. But at the end of the day, my goal is that they'll have the skills to sort of mitigate, to recognize those risks and mitigate those risks in the outdoors as they're doing things. So later in our paddle today, we saw a guy in a stand-up paddleboard, which on a stand-up paddleboard, you're way more likely to end up in the water than you are in a kayak. He was wearing what looked like performance-based layers, kind of like this, and a pair of shorts over them. No PFD. And he was pretty far from the put-in. Now, the weather was great. There wasn't a whole lot of wind, but the water was really cold. About 26 degrees is what my thermometer said. So that is super dangerous in terms of him getting into the water. And then I'm sure he would get in and then get out, but then he's got to get back to the put-in soaking wet, which is just a recipe for hypothermia. So that is sort of how I deal with both mitigating risk and the concept of safety third really oversees that. When I'm paddling, I'm working hard to mitigate risk for myself and the people I'm paddling with, but they also have to take a measure for their own safety. Everyone has to be responsible for their safety. I'm still looking out for the group, but, but everyone's responsible at the end of the day for themselves. So that's the concept of safety third and a brief overview of how I sort of mitigate risk in the outdoors or deal with risk. I keep track of a lot of things uh, and you should be too. And as I said, all those things are in, in my book, which is called Go, which is on Amazon and you can find links to it in, uh, in, the, links, in the links down below. Okay, that was our day paddle. I'll see you outside.